The space era began even before Gagarin's flight on October 4, 1957. At that time, the moving star in the black sky was a visible proof of the superiority of socialism over capitalism. In the USSR, dogs were launched into space, one of them, with Order No. 46, nicknamed Vezdaka, successfully landed near Izhevsk in March 1961. Some dogs flew into space several times, but out of 48 animals, 16 died. The Americans launched monkeys, a total of 18 of them went into space, and 8 of them did not return alive. In addition, cats, rabbits, turtles and guinea pigs were flown into space, no one counted how many of these animals died. For the conquest of outer space was also paid for by the lives of 23 people, not counting the three astronauts who died outside the spaceflight or preparation for it. Some of them suffered horrible, truly martyrs' death. Others left before they even knew what was happening. Today our story is about just seven days in the history of astronautics. And about the human victims of the battle for space. March 23, 1961. The first member of the cosmonaut squad who died was named Valentin Bondarenko. At the end of his 10-day stay in the Sertabar chamber he took off his sensors, wiped the vacated places with absorbent cotton and alcohol, and carelessly threw the piece away. The absorbent cotton hit the coil of a red-hot electric stove and instantly burst into flames. In an atmosphere of pure oxygen, the fire quickly spread to the entire chamber. Because of the large pressure differential, it was impossible to quickly open the door. When the cell was opened, Bondarenko was still alive. Eight hours later he died of burn shock. This happened 19 days before Yuri Gagarin's flight. Valentin Vasilyevich was buried in Kharkov, where his parents lived. The obelisk bears the inscription, to the loving memory of the friends of the pilots. Only in the 1980s did the inscription appear, cosmonauts of the USSR. After the death of my father, my mother and I lived in Zvezny Gorodok for a few more years and went to our relatives in Kharkov, the cosmonaut's son said. We thought that it would be easier to live there. We gave a two-room apartment here and got the same one in Kharkov. Did they help us? My mother received about 100 rubles a month for my father until I was 16. Nobody mentioned us anymore. In the Soviet Union everything connected with the space was strictly classified, so the death of a member of the cosmonaut team was not reported anywhere. The information on V. Bondarenko was declassified only in 1985. January 27, 1967. The Americans were able to send a man into orbit only nine months after Yuri Gagarin's flight. To save the country's shaken prestige, U.S. President John F. Kennedy gave the green light to build ships capable of reaching and returning to the moon. It was this three-man Apollo spacecraft that started the list of American casualties. Astronauts Virgil Grissom, Edward White and Roger Chafee suffocated in smoke during ground preparations for the flight, which was scheduled for February 21. The reason for the fire in the Apollo 1 cabin was again oxygen, the first astronauts did not breathe air but rarefied oxygen, this was how the payload was saved, because 80% of the air was useless nitrogen. A chain of ridiculous accidents led to the tragedy. Some wires were poorly insulated and mechanics left a wrench inside. One of the astronauts shifted that wrench and hit the wiring. The short circuit caused the interior cladding which used combustible materials, to burst into flames. The complex design of the hatch and its locks prevented the crew from hastily opening the hatch from the inside. The commission found that the astronauts died of combustion products poisoning 14 seconds after the fire. After the fire, manned flights under this program were delayed for a year and a half. The first such craft with astronauts, Apollo 7, flew into space only in October 1968 after an investigation and numerous improvements to the cockpit design. April 24, 1967. Soviet cosmonaut Vladimir Komarov died while completing a Soyuz 1 mission when the main parachute failed during the descent to Earth. The strings of the reserve parachute twisted due to the rotation of the descent vehicle. At high speed, the ship crashed into the ground in a deserted area in the Orenburg region and caught fire. Vladimir Komarov's stand-in was none other than Yuri Gagarin. After this catastrophe, the planet's first cosmonaut was finally banned from further flights into orbit. Many publications claim that as Komarov was falling down, Americans at listening stations in Turkey heard the cosmonaut swearing, 
cursing those who had sent him on an unprepared spacecraft for the flight. Kasigin, head of the Soviet government, called by video phone to report that Komarov was a hero. His wife also managed to talk to the cosmonaut and asked what she should tell her children. Kasigin cried. When the last stage of the descent began, American intelligence allegedly heard screams and interpreters picked up words about the heat in the cabin becoming unbearable. The flight of Soyuz 1 was done in an unnecessary hurry on the eve of May Day. The launch took place in spite of the fact that the technicians pointed out many shortcomings. In an interview with the newspaper Pravda on May 17, 1967, Yuri Gagarin criticized the decision to allow an unprepared flight by Vladimir Komarov. And less than a year later, on March 27, 1968, Gagarin himself would die in a training flight on a MiG-15 fighter. On November 15, 1967, Michael Adams was a test pilot for the North American X-15, the first manned spaceflight vehicle to make suborbital flights. The rocket plane could reach the boundary between the atmosphere and space, which was officially set at 100 kilometers. The X-15 was essentially the first reusable spacecraft. The main task of the project was to study flight at hypersonic speeds, evaluate heat shields, and study the psychophysiology of astronauts while steering in the upper atmosphere. It is curious that in the group of pilots of the X-15 from 1960 to 1962 was the legendary future Neil Armstrong, who made several flights on such rocket planes, one of them is shown in the recently released film Man on the Moon. On November 15, 1967, Michael Adams made his seventh rocket plane flight. During his return to Earth, for reasons unknown, the X-15 suddenly became uncontrollable and collapsed in mid-air. This played a major role in the closure of the project, which served as the basis for the space shuttle's shuttles. June 30, 1971. At the end of the mission, the Soyuz 11 with three cosmonauts on board, Georgi Dobrovolsky, Vladislav Volkov and Viktor Patsayev, landed in Kazakhstan. A search party arrived at the landing site and found all three cosmonauts dead. The astronauts had died of decompression sickness caused by a sharp drop in pressure in the descent vehicle. The investigation revealed that during landing at an altitude of 150 kilometers, one of the ventilation valves opened spontaneously and all the air in the descent vehicle went overboard. The death of astronauts could have been avoided if they had had spacesuits. But since Voskhod 1, Soviet spacecrafts, designed for a maximum of two cosmonauts, tried to put three, to be not worse than the Americans, whose spacecrafts were actually three-seaters. Because of space constraints, our spacesuits did not fit in our spacecraft. On Soyuz 11 was to fly a completely different crew, Alexei Leonov, the first man to enter into outer space, as well as Valery Kubasov and Pyotr Kaladin. During the pre-flight medical examination, doctors found a small blackout in one of Kubasov's lungs. The entire crew was suspended from the flight and replaced with a backup. This erroneous X-ray saved their lives. Kubasov did not have any tuberculosis and later he successfully flew into space twice, once together with Alexei Leonov under the program of the first International Soyuz Apollo spaceflight. January 28, 1986. On that day, the Challenger reusable spacecraft exploded in front of thousands of onlookers during its launch from Cape Canaveral. The cause of the tragedy was a malfunction in the ring seal of the solid propellant booster, which caused hot gases to leak out. The other reason was that the launch took place at minus 2 degrees Celsius while the recommended launch temperature was 11 degrees or more. The Challenger crew consisted of seven people, Commander Francis Scobie, co-pilot Michael Smith, research scientists Alison Onizuka, Judith Resnick and Ronald McNair, payload specialist Gregory Jarvis, and Boston teacher Krista McAuliffe, who won the Teacher in Space contest. As a result of the search and rescue operation, many fragments of the shuttle, including the crew cabin, were recovered from the bottom of the Atlantic. It turned out that three members survived the destruction of the shuttle and were conscious they had their personal air supply turned on. The shuttles then had no emergency escape system, which they were equipped with only after this catastrophe, and the crew had no chance of salvation. The emergency escape system developed later would not have been able to save the crew in that disaster anyway. The astronauts suffered a tremendous 200-fold overload when the living compartment hit the water surface at 333 km per hour. For comparison, a 26-fold overload was recorded during the emergency descent of one of the Soyuz spacecraft. 
February 1, 2003. Not only are the two most mournful dates in the history of space exploration associated with shuttles, but also the U.S. Astronautics Day. It is celebrated in this country, on April 12, but not only in memory of Gagarin's flight. The fact is that the launch of the very first reusable spaceship, it was the Columbia, coincided with the 20th anniversary of the first human spaceflight. On February 1, 2003, the Columbia, which was making its 28th flight, crashed just before landing. The crash was caused by the failure of the carbon fiber reinforced plastic sheeting on the left wing. At the time of takeoff, the skin was damaged by a fragment of the oxygen tank falling on it. During landing on Earth, hot gases from friction with atmosphere penetrated inside the structure, the left landing gear strut overheated and exploded, destroying the entire left wing and killing the ship. Along with the Columbia died Commander Richard Husband, co-pilot William McCool, flight engineer Kulpana Chavla, payload specialist Michael Anderson, zoology specialist Laurel Clark, physician David Brown and Israel's first astronaut Elon Ramon. The equivalent of the American shuttle was the Soviet Buran, which made its maiden flight on November 15, 1988. The Buran cladding design team was headed by academician Alexei Lipinov, former rector of the Isevsk Mechanical Institute. Unfortunately, that Buran flight was the only one and that is why the comparison of the quality of Soviet and American shuttle cladding was not tested by time. Subscribe to the channel and share this video with your friends. Give it a thumbs up. Tell us interesting facts you know about the topic of this video. See you in new videos.